vlog. Um, I have a subscriber or viewer that is crazy about Dennis the Menace. And I had mentioned in a previous vlog that we had got some Dennis the Menace artwork out of a storage unit. This by far is one of our neatest and best finds. And I'm going to try to keep it as private as possible. So... <clears throat> This is the book that we found in the unit. This has Hank Ketchum's original signature and drawing. And in the front of it was this that someone had printed off. Like some biography about Hank Ketchum's life. This also was in the unit. Again, I'm trying to keep this personal. I'm going to use this to block off a name. This was found in the unit. And as you can see here in the bottom corner, it's numbered 93 of 100. What happened was we couldn't find any value on this. We wanted to sell it on eBay. So I called the auction houses. I called different appraisers. Couldn't find anything out on it. I ended up contacting someone. I'm not going to say any names. And... Um, he was quite surprised that this was found in the unit. So we talked on the phone for about two hours. Very engaging man conversation. Fun. I felt like I had known this man all of my life. Very fun to talk with. Um, he went through the history of Hank Ketchum and him working together. I don't want to release his name because I haven't spoke with him about this. So that's the reason why I'm keeping his name anonymous and I'm, blo I'm blocking his name off. Um, so here are some more pieces of work. After we spoke on the phone, um, I asked him if he I would, would authenticate it. And the part that I just blocked off was where he did authenticate that that is Hank Ketchum's signature. So, if anybody wants to know if anything is Hank Ketchum's original signature, I have plenty of it. Okay, here's some more artwork that we were sent. I'd like to point out, and I'm going to do it on the back. When he sent the book and the artwork back, I'm not going to turn it around because of the addresses. Um, he returned it from his address to me in his handwriting. Um, some of the collectors that I spoke with said that the writing and this envelope will hold more value than what most of this artwork will that I'm getting ready to show you. So keep in mind when you're dealing with, um, what would you call it? Famous people? Coll uh, collectible stuff like this? Um, anything that's an original handwriting or anything, doesn't matter what it is, hang on to it. Okay, so, let me get my folder out here. <clears throat> okay, here's a piece of artwork. Make sure I don't want to sew this because I'm going to block names out here. Here is a one-of-a-kind piece of artwork that he sent to me. And on the back here you can see it as well. He drew it himself. Do you have anything you want to say? I'm just going to go through. Here's another envelope. Um, he is 
he's an official person that has took over to finish the, to do the, the work since, um, since Hank Ketchum is no longer with us that he's he's an, he's a, an official part of the team that keeps Dennis the Menace alive. So this is another envelope. This in here is a Sunday strip newspaper. I think. Don't quote me, but I believe this is one of a kind. This is before it goes to the print, to the actual print. This is one of a kind. And I'm going to block off names. This is one of a kind. And what I'm blocking off is his signature because I don't have his permission. I don't want, I don't think he wants people to bombard him. But I have one lady that is just a huge collector of Dennis the Menace and she was so inquisitive about it. Um, and I've had people to ask me, what is the coolest thing that you've ever found in a storage unit? And then once I get done showing you this, I'm going to try to hurry up without damaging anything. I keep this put up in a, in a plastic tote in a fireproof safe. Uh, this here is some artwork of my two dogs that he did. This is also one of a kind. You can see from the back. This artwork is Jazabel. She was my Basset Hound and Lab mix. Got her from the dog pound when she was four weeks old. This was Sandy. Um, I found her on the side of the road. She had a uh, severe mange. Uh, we believe she was Beagle in lab, so we don't know. Neither one of my dogs, they're, they're both dead. Um, let me see what else we have here. Oh! This is my... Something I sent you for your birthday. Happy birthday. It's one, uh, another one of a kind piece of artwork. That's just an empty, empty envelope. Okay. So we have all this that he sent. And after I got all this stuff, I told my husband, I said, you know, this man has been so generous to us. I could never sell any of this. I don't care how bad times got, how tight money got, I cannot part with it. He's been so generous to us, and I still to this day don't know how to how to repay him. What I can buy him, like art supplies or anything, I don't know how to repay him for his kindness. Um, but that was one of the coolest things. So, um, another cool thing that we done was... When I got all of this artwork, I want to try my best to leave names out of this stuff. We, um, there was a, there was a, uh, man that owned a service station, um, about 35 miles from us, mm. about 35 miles from us that had passed away, and he was a collector, and he collected everything to do with service stations, the pumps, the signs, cans, everything. I mean, he had, oh gosh, how much? I don't know. He had, he had built. A, thousands and thousands and pieces of He had of built, stuff. built all kinds, of, he built like, almost like a little small town with, with, with all this stuff hanging around in it. And, but a filling station as, <laughs> as, as the main part, part of the, the little section of the place where he, he'd put all this stuff. And he had, he he passed away and well his he um, they said the auctioneer said his wife made a funny and said when you die I'm going to auction all that stuff off and what was it about two months after he passed away um, she had hired this guy to auction the stuff off and we we're on this auction company's Facebook page so I sent a television celebrity. To, there's two of them that work work as a group. I'm not going to say no names. 
um, I contacted their office to let them know that there's going to be this huge auction of, of uh, service station stuff. So they called me. One of the guys did. And I my jaw just about hit the drop the floor. And I was like, who is this? So we got to talking. And so I said, well, if you don't mind me asking you about this Dennis the Menace artwork stuff I have. So he um, said right off the top of his mind, without actually seeing it and just by what I've told him, he said that you could be looking at anywhere um, probably in about 10, 20 years. He said you're probably looking at about five digits without a decimal on up. He said because a lot of it is one of a kind. It has original signatures. Um, and I told him, I was like, well, I can't sell it. I was like, that would never happen. And the unfortunate thing is my husband and I probably will not have surviving children. So, um, this stuff will be auctioned off one day and the money will be donated to humane societies. Okay. So I've kind of formed a friendship with those two celebrities and we keep in touch with each other. If we find out that there's uh, certain types of stuff coming up for auction this area that we know about, I, I, I sent him a text message and let him know. There's also been times when I've sent him a text message and asked him that we've seen stuff at auction. Hey, what about this? You know, what do you think about this? Um, also, we became friends with... Um, one of the uh, uh, people on storage wars. We got to be really good friends with her. She is a super nice person. Again, I'm not calling any names. But it seems like that when you get into, and she actually found me on Facebook, when you get into this stuff of, I'm not sure exactly how to put it, but when you when you really dig to find out the worth of something, you kind of tend to need to step outside the box. You need to get in touch with the professionals. And sometimes we have we have called, gosh, like museums and what larger like large appraisers and stuff like that for some of the stuff we have. I mean, to me, if I have something like this Dennis the Menace stuff here, I'm not going to twiddle foot around and go by what John Doe down the road says that's been selling on eBay for 20 years. That's good he's been selling on eBay for 20 years. But he may not know about this stuff. I would rather go to a source that knows about this stuff that can give me a better estimate. So my thought is if you have something that is of significance like this, you need to go to the professionals. It's kind of like going to the doctor. That's how I look at it. You don't go to a family doctor to get a tooth pulled. You go to a dentist to get your tooth pulled. Or a orthodontist, whatever they call them. Um, so that's how I kind of, we are with this stuff here. We just... We have some neighbors that... They know what they're talking about when it comes to um, collectible stuff, especially artwork. She is very, very good. And I know she's probably going to watch this vlog. And her initial is the letter L, and I'm not going to say her name. Um, but she's the most lovable person that you'll ever know in your life. And the smartest person. And she also has sold on eBay for, oh my gosh, 20-some years. Um, she's at antique stores, so she knows her stuff. She knows exactly what she's got. She knows exactly what people are going to pay for it. And so, you know, that's my thought. Instead of just, you know, when you get something of significance, instead of just saying, well, I'm going to ask this person, or I'm going to ask that person, or I'm going to post it on Facebook, don't do that. Call the professionals. If you think it's something that's going to be what we think sometimes is more than a thousand dollars at least. I'm going to take the time 
to call some museums or some appraisers or somebody like that that has the knowledge that I can email or text and let them see firsthand what it is. Um, we're not in this stuff just to make pennies. Sometimes, like, like our summer months, for example, when we go to auctions and storage unit auctions, estate auctions, that stuff is yard sale stuff. So, so for spring and summer, is yard sales for us. Everything that's going to be put on eBay, I either take my time putting it on eBay or I hold it back and put it on eBay once fall and winter gets here. So fall and winter is our months when, when we have our eBay filled up with about 500 listings. So our seasons keep in a cycle like that. Um, but that's... That's probably one of the coolest things that we have found in a, in, in a storage unit so far. Um, also about storage units, um, I had somebody uh, send me a message about they had bought their first storage unit and said that it had credit cards in it. Anything, first you need to check with your, your state laws. And what we do is we ask the the auctioneer there if or they even tell you if there's anything personal in there like what driver's licenses credit cards anything checkbooks like that, yes. any type of Id identifying information with date of births on it original signatures or anything you need to turn that into the front desk there at that office you legally you are not supposed to take it you can get into some really really deep trouble with that stuff and as far as a certain Certain states and stuff, if you find firearms or anything like firearms or anything that's regulated, you're supposed to turn that in also. Mm -hmm. Because... Anything has who, to be registered. I mean, who, know, who knows the, that, uh, that, that nice little pistol you found in the, in the drawer, it may have been used in a murder or whatever, and now all of a sudden you've got your hands on it and the cops pick you up with it and you've got this gun that that matches all the ballistics, then then you got to prove yourself innocent. So, I mean, yes, a lot of people keep that stuff and not even turn it in. But I'm we're the type of people that mm -mm. we're not we're not gonna keep stuff like that. We, I mean, yes, we can we can get it back from the cops after a certain amount of time after the gun's been the serial number's been ran and stuff like that. So, you know. But those type things are stuff that that we're that we're not personally going to keep unless it's unless it happens to be unless we can actually s say it was le legal for us to get and legal for us to keep. And we have law enforcement or law enforcement telling us, okay, it's okay for you to have this and some type of documentation backing it up saying that we can have this. It is now legally ours. This firearm was not involved in any crimes. It is now ours. And then that way, get documentation from the police department. Then that way, if anything ever comes up, you're like, hold on, wait a minute. I've done been to the police department. They've ran it. They've checked it. There's nothing wrong with it. It is legally ours. Um, we have, talking about storage, I know I'm going off subject just for a second. Um, we have actually um, been told that when you buy storage units, that now for like washers and dryers and refrigerators, anything that has a serial number on it, isn't it that you have to provide proof of ownership now or something? Not necessarily. When you take it to metal recycle. Not necessarily on this stuff, on that kind of stuff. It's... It's more like with the cars or something that's got that's got has serial numbers on it. And if I did, the local our local uh, scrapyard down here don't take stuff unless it's don't take won't take cars without titles and <coughs> stuff like that. Now, so. Okay, so in any of the vlog today, um, if you want to know how much something is worth, if we if or how much. What something is worth and what someone is going to pay for it is two different ends of the stick. It's like a night and day. Okay. This, 
I can put it on eBay and ask a million dollars for it, but that doesn't mean that someone's going to pay that for it. If I can't find anything on it, there's two things. It's either a good thing, it's worth money, or it's a bad thing, it never sells. That's the reason why it's never listed. Um, we have ran into it a few times to where we couldn't find out anything on something. And what we do is we just put a price on it, we put it at bidding, and we let it run. And if it doesn't sell at bidding, then I list it as fixed price or best offer. And just let someone tell me what it's worth. And, and if it's something that we can't authenticate, like say purses or something like that, you know, we, we can't tell whether it's a knockoff or whatever else. Then that goes in our that goes in our yard sale pile because there's no there's it's really it's not worth our time, it's not worth our effort to take something like that and get get popped for selling knockoff items. I mean, so I mean, so we we basically leave that kind of stuff alone. We just you know, it's, we just use it, throw it in the throw it in the yard sale, used purse. We don't. I mean. I mean, the last thing we want to do is put it on put it on eBay and say, "Well, we got this authentic coach purse here, this you know purse or something over else." If we can't verify it by the by different avenues that we have, by looking it up, by looking for the marks on it, by looking at everything about it to tell what the quality and everything else, that then it's not it's not worth our time. If it's something we just you know if we throw it in the, if it's better off just throw it in the throw it in the yard sale pile and just throw a it in the pile and for whatever and and <clears throat> then just and then it is to get to get caught trying to sell knockoffs and they are checking real hard about knockoff stuff now. Yes, I they mean. are. eBay. I have noticed that I've seen a lot of people um, posting about eBay really cracking down on authenticating stuff. I honestly can't blame them. What if it was your company and somebody was making knockoffs and selling the stuff for the same price, if not a little bit cheaper, and it's hurting your company? You have to put your, yourself in the company's shoes also. If it was my company, if I owned Coach, I wouldn't like it one bit. I would be coming down on eBay with the hammer saying, yo, get rid of these people that are selling these knockoffs. End it. Okay, I see our battery up here in the corner is getting low. There is one funny thing that I want to tell y'all about, and I just happened to think about it. And I hope this gives everyone a laugh. We were at a storage, storage unit auction one day, and when the guy opened the door, the only thing that was in it was one of those large freezers and a wedding dress laying over the top of it. And when the guy opened it, somebody said, um... Of course, you cannot go into the storage unit. You can go to the edge of the concrete at the door, but you cannot enter. Um, so, somebody somebody hollered and said, well, I'm bidding on a dress. And I hollered and I said, no, I'm not bidding on that because I don't know if the bride is in that freezer or not. And everybody busted out laughing. And I think he ended up selling that storage unit for, what, $100, didn't he? Something like that. Um, Battery exhausted. <laughs>